Hi, I'm George. We're going to be making this green screen animation right here. Let me just go ahead and just play a little bit of this. There it is. And this has three separate green screen elements to make this basic animation. I'll let that song session get out of the screen. And there we go. Okay, let's take a look and see what is involved in making this animation. We have these things right down here. Now, here's the actual project file for the Premiere Elements. And all of this stuff up here. These are files and folders that are made by Premiere Elements as you save the program. So all this stuff is going to be dumped in here automatically. I didn't make any of that. That's just made automatically. After watching this video, make sure you check out my complete training course for Premiere Elements. There's a link for that right down there in the description. Now the elements in here, we have this desk element with a green screen in the middle. Let's see if I can make that a bit larger here so you can see that. There we go. And then we have our background plate. This is the actual video in here flying over the desert. And we have the green screen flying saucer. And we finish that off with this file right here, which is just these little video elements, kind of video recorder elements. Now this particular image here, this bit of video, is a WebM format. And this is something which cannot be opened up inside of Premiere Elements. So I had to convert this over to the MP4 format. So for this conversion, I'll be using a tool from our sponsor. This is the WinX HD Video Converter Deluxe Program. Very easy to use. Go up here to Video. Just bring in your video. There's that WebM video right here. Open this up. And then choose the format you want to convert this over to. I'm going over here just to a standard MP4 video. Choose OK. We'll browse for our location here, and that's fine. And over here we can choose just a few things. I'm going to check Use High Quality Engine. That's the most important one at this point. And click on Run. It'll go through then very quickly do that conversion. And there we go. That is finished. And it's right here. It just added a little one onto the name. So this is the new one that we just converted. That's the one that we have inside the project. But I did the conversion in the exact same way. If you want to find out more about Windex HD Video Converter Deluxe, how to do those kind of video conversions. I have a link for that in the description for a video I did all about how to use this program. Okay, let's go back over to Premiere Elements. There we go. And we'll start this off with a brand new file. So let's do a new up here project and I'll save changes on that one. You can then rename it right here. I'll call it Flying Saucer. It's going into the same working folder we had before. Leave everything else as is. Choose OK. And here we are, basic project. And the first thing we need to do is to bring in all of our media. You can bring in media at any point during a project, but if you already have some things you know you're going to be using, go ahead and bring those in at the beginning. So I'll click on Add Media. And over here, From Files and Folders, you can add from the organizer or camera devices and so forth. But all of ours are in a folder, and it's right here. I want that one. That's our desktop. I want the Control key down, and I'll grab the MP4. Notice that it is not showing that WebM file in here because it cannot import WebM files, but we can import our MP4 that we did our conversion to. There's that mountain, and here's the spaceship. It's those four pieces. Okay, I'm going to pull the layer up here just a little bit, give us a bit more space to work on. Now, the furthest in behind part of this whole project is the mountainscape, but I'm going to pull down first the desk in here. And the mountain is going to be eventually going down here on video layer one. So I'll pull the desk and I'll put this desk on video layer two right there. So I can put this in behind. And the reason why I did that is I want to resize this. And it's easier to resize it if it's on top in your layer stack. So I'll pull that down here and put it on video three. And I'll move that in just a bit. But here we go. Now whenever you bring in a clip like this, you can see your little control handles out there. Let me just close the assets down. There we go. You automatically get a motion applied to it. Now the motion is just the position of this and the size of this. That's all that is. Now I'm going to grab one of these handles in here. I'll pull this in and I can then resize this image just by dragging that around and getting the position I want. So I'm not going to put it where I want it. I want it just bigger than that screen area and that's good. I'll now take this there. I'll just grab the top one. These are linked together. This top one here is video, bottom one is sound. They're linked. And I'll pull those underneath this image here. So it's now sitting behind. Okay. Now if I click in here someplace, notice that it gives me the top layer automatically with the control handles. That's why I had the landscape moved above there just for that resize step. Now we need to cut a hole in this and we have that green screen elements. So this is real easy to do. Go over here to FX and then where it says show all, click on that. And you can then choose what you want to look at. Instead of looking at everything, you could choose an individual section. I want to have keying because we're going to be doing a chroma key on this. Click on keying. And then in here, 
right here is a green screen key. You take this and you drag it down here on top of that video layer for this particular layer. So I'll just grab it, drag it down here, and drop it just like that onto the video part of that layer. And it automatically removes that screen for us. Now it's a little bit weird over here on the right hand side, and that's our cutoff. If I pull this back like this, it's kind of odd. If I pull it up here, it does some weird things. So you need to balance this out to get just the right effect. Also the threshold will have some effect on that. So it's a question of balancing these things out and to get just the right effect. So if you're seeing anything showing through, you want to balance that a bit. If you're having problems with the cutoff, you want to balance that a little bit. So just come in here and play a little bit with these and see how it looks. You know, do some threshold stuff like that. And then your cutoff, so it looks as clean as possible. And I think that looks pretty good right here. We can now test that. Let's just go back to the beginning, click on this, hit the play button, and look outside and around here. See if you're seeing any of that stuff showing any place outside. I'm not. There's some video over here, of course, because that's correct. But everything looks nice and clean. So there we go. That's just fine. So that's our first green screen element, giving us the hole inside of this area. Now our second one is going to be the spaceship. And because I want the spaceship disappearing beyond the edge up here, I need that spaceship underneath this layer. So let's just go ahead and move this layer up again. That's our disk layer. Just pulled it up. And that gives me a video layer right down here. And we'll put our spaceship right in this section. So back here to our assets. There's the spaceship. I'll bring that down and drop it in right here. And it's a little shorter piece of video. That's fine. I could either loop this to get longer or extend it, a lot of things, but I'm just gonna leave it the same length. This is fine for this demonstration. Back up a little bit, and I see it's too large, but it is sitting inside of that hole. If we have our position for it, but I wanna pull it over to the top, get it above right here, and we need to resize it, just make it easy, resize it on top, and then put it back into the correct layer position. Now, we're not seeing anything in behind because, again, we have this green screen. So, same trick, back over to the FX button right here, we're still in keying, come down to the green screen, drag it down onto that video clip, and that pulls out that green. Now notice in here I can see through that. I'm seeing some of that landscape through the spaceship. So let's come in and we'll play off our threshold a little bit and with the cutoff a little bit until we get a nice solid color. There it is, that works out right where we need that. Okay, looks good. And now I want to resize this. And that again is on our motion up here. Notice that when I opened up the FX, it still left the other applied effects up here. So looking at our applied effects, which include the original motion opacity and now also that green screen. And this is different for each one of your video layers. Okay, now I want to make this smaller. So click on this, it's on the top right now. So these control handles are now applying to that spaceship layer, which is the top layer. And I can then pull this in a little bit and make the spaceship smaller. And I'll put it right down here to begin with. And I think I'll put it just a little bit offside. Now, don't worry about it overlapping over there. We're going to fix that once we move the layer underneath. Okay, here's our beating position. Now, I want to move this up to here. So, we need to have some animation running on this thing. So, let's first put this back to the very beginning. There it is. And then go up here. This little icon right here kind of looks like a stopwatch. Click on that. And that then gives us keyframes or the ability to add keyframes. And that will then allow us to do some animation. So, go over here again to our video layer. Click on this arrow right here, and this brings down this little bit, which allows us to put in keyframes. I'm also going to zoom in on this. Our zoom control is right here. Let's just make it a bit larger. There we go. It's pretty good. Our playhead's at the beginning, right there, and hit that for a keyframe at that point. And now pull this down towards the end, right here. Put a new keyframe at that point. I can then take this, and I'll pull it up here. I'm going to pull it clear off like that so it's beyond that window. And now if I go back to the beginning, this button here takes you back to the previous keyframe. There it is, that's that one. So what we just put in, go back and forth. If I play this now, we should see that spaceship move. There it is, right through our frame. Notice how it's kind of stopping and starting sometimes. That's because it's trying to render that as we go. So a good idea if you're doing this kind of compositing of effects in here is to click this render button. Let's just get this out of the way, there we are. And this will then go through and render the video for nice, clean playback. So you may need to do this several times while you're doing a project. So I'll click on Render, and we'll let this go ahead and run through. Now, this can take a couple of minutes for the render, so I'm just going to fast forward or skip forward in the video. As soon as this finishes, I'll then bring the video back in again. It'll happen instantaneously for you. So here we go. Let's jump forward to when this is finished. All right, let's now see how this looks. Here's our Play button and nice and smooth playback now because we did that little preview. 
That's going to go over the front like that. That's fine. So just go ahead and work its way out. Looks good. Now to fix that little problem, I'm going to be taking this video layer and I'll drag it underneath the desktop layer, which is this one here. So it's now in behind and we'll be seeing that animation through this window. And because I changed things around, I may need to re-render this to see how this works. See if we're lucky or not. Click on play. It's just kind of jerky again right there. So I made a change in the animation. So once again, I'll run this render right here. It's going to render the animation again and I'll bring the video back up as soon as this is finished. And let's see how that looks. Hit the play button and here we go. Nice and smooth. Now this time it's in behind that desktop layer. So it's going to be hidden by that green screen. There we go. And that's perfect. Okay, so far so good. Now I want to add in that effect of us watching something taken on a video camera. And that's with that little bit of video that we had to convert at the beginning. So I'll go back here to the beginning of our project, back up to our assets. And that's that one right down here. Again, it's another green screen element. I'll just drag this down. I want this on top again. Now this time, this one's going to stay on top just because of where it happens to be positioned. So that works out well for us. And I'm going to, again, drag our control handles. Because it's the top layer, I can resize it just by grabbing our control handles. And let's get this thing to fit properly inside this window. And we'll just move it around and stretch it a bit until it looks good. And that looks like it's a pretty good spot right about there. Maybe just a little bit larger, something like that. All right. Now, because this isn't moving around at all, I can leave it on top and it's going to look just fine. I don't have to put it in behind. Let's now do the same trick here. It's also a green screen element. So back to the FX. We're still in the keying section. So here's our green screen key right here. Drag it onto that video layer and it keys that out. And notice we're not seeing a lot of stuff. So again, we had to come in here and play around with our threshold and our cutoff to see all of those elements. So I'll pull the threshold over here clear to the right and we're beginning to see those right here. Looks pretty good like that. Let's check our cutoff on that. If I go too far, it gets really dark. I don't want it black. I want it a bit see-through. So pull that back just a bit right here. And that looks pretty good. So we have those elements in here, pushing our threshold up. And then I made them a bit more see-through by bringing the cutoff down on that. And here's those video elements. Now again, because this is sitting on top, it's not moving around. It's sitting in the same position relative to this desktop. So it can be sitting on top. Okay, once again, I've added in a new element. So I want to render this so we can get a good preview. So I'll click on render, I'll let that render as soon as this is done. I'll then bring the video back up again. All right, let's now see how this looks. Hit the play button and there we go. A little bit of animation on that video recorder stuff. And there's our flying saucer and it's all looking great. Okay, last little bit is I don't want this going on all the way to the end down there. Maybe about that long is good enough, that far is good enough. So I want to trim these things. Hit the trim button. That trims this layer. Let's go up here to this layer. Hit that trim button here. Go up to this layer. Hit that trim button right here. I've now trimmed all of those elements. And that's everything. The flying saucer doesn't matter because it finishes before that trim bit. Let's now click on each one of these. Hit the delete key. And we'll just get rid of the excess bit of video in there. We don't need any of that. And back up a little bit. And here's our finished length video. And we'll play this through. I'm just going to expand the window a bit here. You can actually grab the window right here. Notice how the icon changes. Here's an arrow. This has kind of a funny line thing and the arrow again. You see that funny line, you can grab at that point, hold your mouse button down and pull that up or down and resize the preview monitor window. And we'll now see how this plays. Click on play. And there we go. There's our nice animation using three different layers of green screen. We'll let it go ahead and play through clear to the end. And that's up here just about right there. And that's the end of that video clip. Let's now output this video. So we'll start off with going up to the file menu and I'm just gonna click on save and save the project file. There we go, it's safe. We now need to export this out. And again, file menu, export and share. You know, quick export, export for devices or disk, online audio image, whatever you need. If I was going up to YouTube, for instance, I would go up here to online and choose my format for online. If I'm going for devices, maybe I want to go out to TV or mobile or custom. I'll just use this at a computer and the default 1080p size, which is right down here. And I'll leave all these settings as is. You can browse through your destination right down here. I'm just going to change this over to our existing working folder, which is right here. By default, it goes into your default videos folder. 
and we'll click on save and save out that project. Now the larger your project, the longer this is going to take, obviously, the bigger the project, the longer it takes. This will go pretty fast because it's a very, very short little video clip. But again, I'll just fast forward through this save section. Okay, we can now open up that folder right here and make sure it's saved properly. There it is, saved as an MP4 file. If I open this up, this will be opening up in the VLC media player, which is what I use for playing videos on my computer. If you're using a different media player, it'll open up in whatever your default is and you'll see a different icon showing right down here. Okay, let's double click on this and see how this plays. There we go. This little text on here, this is just in the VLC media player showing the title of the video clip. You can ignore that, that's not part of the video. Looks real pretty. And let it finish off here, which is just another couple of seconds. And there we go, played great. Okay, now if by any chance you're doing a very large video or a high def video, you may need to bring that file size down. This one is so small, it doesn't matter. Let's say I was doing an hour long video or even a half hour long video at 4K resolution, something like that, and then needed to compress the file size so I could then easily use it online or for other uses. You can also do that with the WinX HD video converter. Let me show you that real fast. Bring this down here, click on done on that. And we're done with this. And here we're back in our converter. And I'm just gonna close that out, go over here to video. And here's our flying saucer finished video clip. Choose open. There we go. Now in here we can convert this to any other format. Now we already converted it before as you saw there. But we also can use this to compress at the same time. Click this little gear icon right here. And we now can set specific adjustments in here. So I can come over here and change my profile. It brings this page back up again. I can come down and change the video codec in here if I need to. I can change my bit rate, aspect ratio. I can adjust the frame rate. A smaller frame rate or lower frame rate is going to be a smaller file. I can adjust my resolution here, maybe bring the size of the video down. Here's your 4K right here. I could bring it down to a smaller resolution if that's what I needed to do even customize that specifically. Then I can also adjust the audio settings, the audio codec, sample rate, channels and bit rate and so forth. So there are a lot of settings in here. I can come in and be very, very specific with this to make some adjustments and save it out in a much smaller file size. Again, I don't need to do that for this particular file, but this is a great tool for doing that kind of very careful tweaking. This is actually better than Premiere Elements for that kind of downsizing a video to make a smaller file size for any time where that is useful. Now again, I have more information about this particular program, including a video on that as well, on bringing down your file size, compressing your file size, and I'll put the link for that one in the description. So take a look at those two videos on the WinX HD Video Converter Deluxe. And again, they're sponsoring this video. And this is one of those little utilities that I don't use all the time, but every once in a while, especially when I find a file that I want to use, but it's in the wrong format, this is a great way to fix that particular problem. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button, click on share, click on subscribe, and take a look in the description for my complete training course for Premiere Elements. I think you'll like that one as well. And I'll see you next time.